In this lesson, we want to review the addition property of equality. So for the majority of you taking the course, you fully understand how to solve a linear equation one variable. But again, it might have been some time since you've kind of gone through the steps and you might not have fully ever understood it. So it's just good to get a review in before we look at anything that is more challenging. So a linear equation one variable is just defined as something like ax plus b equals c, where a is said to not be equal to zero. So you have this guy right here, this a, which is the coefficient of x, you have b and c, which are constants, and all of those can be any real number that you want. So a, b, and c can be anything you want with the exception of a, which cannot be zero. The reason a can't be zero is because it's multiplying the variable. And if zero was multiplying x, well, then you'd have no variable involved. So that would be an issue for us. Now, a linear equation of one variable is sometimes called a first degree equation because the largest exponent on the variable is a one, right? And some of you remember that quadratic equations where the largest exponent on a variable is a two are sometimes called a second degree equation. Okay, so it's the same concept there. So a few examples of a linear equation one variable, something like 2x minus five equals 11, where a here would be two, b would be negative five, and c would be 11. Or something simple just like x equals 19. Right here, a would be one, b would be zero, and c would be 19. Right, so something like that. Or you could have some fractions involved. You could have something like 1 fourth x plus 1 ninth equals 23 seventeenths, okay? Here, A would be 1 fourth, B would be 1 ninth, and C would be 23 seventeenths. So when we work with equations, we need to understand the basic definition. So we're saying that two algebraic expressions are set equal in value. So this algebraic expression here of 2x minus 3 is set equal to this algebraic expression here of 7. So this guy and this guy are each algebraic expressions. But the whole thing, because of the equality, is known as an equation, right? So the 2x minus 3 is equal to 7. Now, when we solve an equation, and we'll talk about this more in a moment, we are basically finding the value or the values that when we replace the variable or the variables gives us a true statement. When we say gives us a true statement, it means that the left side of the equation has the same value as the right side of the equation. So they are the same. So in this example here, I've given you the solution. So x is equal to 5. That means that I can plug a 5 in here for x, and that will give me the same value on the left as I have on the right. So let's try that out. So we have 2 multiplied by, plug in a 5 for x, then minus 3 equals 7. I would just simplify each side. Seven on the right, I can't do anything with that. On the left, two times five is 10. So you'd have 10 and then minus three. 10 minus three is seven. Let me kind of write that a little better. Again, 10 minus three is seven. So we would say seven is equal to seven. And that's true. Seven is the same or is equal to seven. So this is a true statement. Now, if you plug something in for the variable and it's not the correct solution, you will not get a true statement. So let's say that I said that x was four as an example. So let's erase this and this and this. We'll put a four here. Two times four is eight. Eight minus three is five. Five does not equal seven. So this would be false, okay? This would be false. So when you work with a linear equation in one variable, you can always check to make sure you got the right answer. You just plug your proposed solution in for your variable and then you make sure you have the same value on the left as you have on the right. So let me put this back to the way that it was so that it's correct again. So again, we said this was a five, and so this would be 10, and this would be seven, and this would be true. So in most cases, we are not gonna be just simply given our solution. We have to go through a series of steps to obtain our solution. Again, when we solve an equation, we are finding the value or the values that make the equation true. Your ultimate goal when you're solving an equation is to get the variable you're looking for, in this case it's x, equal to some number. That's when it's solved, okay? x equals some number. That is the value I can plug back in for x, again, that makes the equation true. So if you wanna write something down, you would say that your goal is to isolate, isolate the variable, okay? So isolate the variable on one side of the equation. So there's a few properties we can talk about real quick that'll get us all the way there. 
So the first thing is that adding a number and its opposite will always give you zero. The second thing is that adding zero to a number leaves it unchanged. And the third thing is that we can add or subtract the same value to or from both sides of an equation and not change the solution. So that last property is known as the addition property of equality, and that's the focus of our lesson today. So if I have something like, again, x minus 7 equals 13, and I want to isolate the variable, I want to undo what's being done to x. If it's subtraction, I want to think about addition. If it's addition, I want to think about subtraction. If it was multiplication, like we'll see in the next lesson, I want to think about division. If it was division, I want to think about multiplication. Here I'm subtracting away 7, so to undo that, I just want to add 7 because negative seven plus seven gives me zero. Again, the additive inverse property. And then if I had x plus zero on this side, that's just equal to x, right? Zero is the additive identity. So let's go through this guy. Again, I'm subtracting away seven. So I would start by adding seven to kind of counteract that. If I'm subtracting away seven, I add seven. But then to make it legal, I've got to add seven on the right side as well. So I did this to this side and this to this side. You think about that as maintaining the balance. If I add seven to the left, I've got to add seven to the right and then I'm good to go. So now it's pretty simple. If I have minus seven plus seven, or you can think about that as negative seven plus seven, that's just zero. So I have x plus zero is equal to 20, which is just x equals 20, right? So that's our solution there, nice and easy. And you might see people, or you might see your textbook, write your solution like this. This is known as solution set notation. It's not something we're going to use too much throughout the course, but I just want you to know that it does exist in case you see it. You're not wondering why, you know, it's notated differently or wondering if you made a mistake. It's just different notation. So we can always check this again by plugging in a 20 for X and making sure we have the same value on the left as on the right. So I would have a 20 minus a seven equals 13. 20 minus seven is 13. So 13 equals 13. So yes, this is true. This is true. We have the right answer. And again, for this one, it's so easy. You could just eyeball it. What number minus seven gives us 13? Well, 20 does, right? 20 minus seven is 13. So we know we have the correct answer here. All right, let's take a look at another one. So we have x plus 11 equals negative 34. Again, our goal is to isolate, isolate the variable. Okay, so how do I do that? I have plus 11 here. If I'm adding 11 to x, how can I undo that? Just subtract 11 away, right? If I have 11 minus 11 or 11 plus negative 11, I get zero, right? So it's gone, right? I'd have x plus zero, which is just x. So I'd have x plus 11 and then plus negative 11. Or if you want to, you can just put minus 11. It doesn't matter. It's the same thing. And then is equal to, you have negative 34. Because I did it over here, I've got to do it over here. Okay, you've got to maintain that balance. Again, that's the addition property of equality. You can add the same number to both sides of the equation. So over here, I can just cross this out and put a zero, right? It's just basically canceled. You're left with X and this is equal to negative 34 plus negative 11 is going to be negative 45. Again, we can check this. We think about plugging in a negative 45 for X there. So if I had negative 45 plus 11, does that equal negative 34? Yes, it does. Negative 45 plus 11 is negative 34. So you get negative 34 equals negative 34. So this is true. Right? We can just check that off and say true. All right, let's look at one that's a little bit more challenging. So we have 2x minus 7 equals x minus 3. So you can still just solve this with addition or subtraction. And again, our goal is to isolate the variable. Always think about that. We're isolating the variable. So how do I isolate the variable here? We have 2x minus 7 equals x minus 3. Well, the first thing is I've got to get all the variable terms to one side, and then I want all the numbers on the other, right? That's going to give me the possibility of having x equals some number. Right now, I have an x involved in this guy here and an x involved here. So I've got to move this over here. And the way I can do that is I can use the addition property of equality. I can add negative x to both sides of the equation. So I can say this is 2x minus x minus 7 is equal to x minus x minus 3. Again, all I did was I subtracted x away from each side. Or again, you could write this as plus negative x 
doesn't matter, whatever is more convenient for you. X plus negative X is zero, so this is gone. I now have two X minus X minus seven is equal to negative three. Now I can simplify because two X minus X is just X. So I have X minus seven is equal to negative three. And now all I need to do is think about the fact that negative seven is being added to X, or you can think about that as seven being subtracted away from X. So I wanna add seven to each side of the equation. So I'm gonna do this in vertical format because it's a little bit simpler. So I'm gonna put plus seven here and then plus seven here. It's just a more compact way to do it. This is gonna cancel and I'm gonna end up with X is equal to, over here, negative three plus seven is going to be positive four. So if we wanted to check this, let me erase everything. So I would plug in a four for this X here and this X here. So it's gotta be for each occurrence of the variable. Okay, so I would have two multiplied by four minus seven is equal to four minus three. Two times four is eight. So you'd have eight minus seven over here. Four minus three is one. Eight minus seven is one. So you get one equals one. This is true. Okay, so we know our solution here, X equals four is correct.